All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to an, another awesome Earth Rangers live session. I, my name is Catherine, and I am coming at you live from the Earth Rangers Center. And with me today, I have awesome Sonic. Now, um, we're going to be talking all about uh, barn owls today. So, if there's any questions that you guys have ever had about barn owls, now is your chance to ask it, and we're going to try to get to every single question. Okay. Um, we're also going to be learning, uh, uh, obviously, like I said, <laughs> about barn owls. But before I jump into learning about uh, awesome barn owls like Sonic, I'm going to talk a little bit about Earth Rangers. For any of you guys that are new, um, coming in and watching these lives, if you haven't watched a live before or don't even know what Earth Rangers is, we're just gonna tell you a little bit about what it is before getting into it. So Earth Rangers is a kids conservation organization and we are completely committed to protecting animals and the environment. Now we have over 150,000 Earth Ranger members across Canada and it is completely free to join and it is completely free to, um, we have a brand new app and it's free to join that as well. And on that application, there are tons of things that you could do to help protect animals and more so as well. But we're gonna talk a little bit about the app later on. For now, I wanna get into talking about our awesome Sonic. Now, as you can see, he kind of just finished his lung, lunch, sorry. So he's a little bit tired. He's a little, little bit sleepy today, but I'm not, I'm super excited to talk about uh, barn owls because they are such a cool animal. So while I wait for you guys to shoot, uh, to send me in some questions, um, any questions that you have, I'll go into some information that I have and I want to share with you guys. So first off, we're gonna start with barn owls. Where do they live? Barn owls can actually be found on every single continent in the world, except for Antarctica and certain islands. Now, uh, Sonic here specifically, he is a European barn owl. So that is where you're gonna find his species of barn owls in Europe. But there are of course uh, uh, barn owl species here in North America. Here in Canada, we could find them in the southern tips of Canada is where you could find some barn owls. Now the differences between Sonic, the European barn owl and North American ones that we could find here is definitely their coloration. So we could see Sonic here, he has some beautiful coloration, very light, kind of gray, white, a little bit of beige. Now North American barn owls, they're gonna be a lot more brown in coloration, especially on the wings and the head. The bottoms are usually gonna be white, the stomachs are usually gonna be white uh, like uh, usual, but it's definitely the, the differences that you're gonna see on the wing and the head, it's gonna be a lot more brown and a little bit darker. All right, so we're going to start in some questions. I see Lisa is asking me, how old is Sonic? That's a great question. Now, Sonic, he is actually pretty old, especially for a barn owl. He is about 14 years old this year, which is actually very old for a barn owl. Uh, not very old, sorry, but it's old for a barn owl in terms of their wild cousins. Now, barn owls' lifespans in the wild are only about one to two years old. They rarely, rarely live past two years old, and that is because they are predated on by other animals a lot. So Sonic here, um, definitely in captivity, they get to live a lot longer because they don't have uh, predators. So that is why he is so old with us today, but they can live to be up to 15 to 20 years old, so he still has a little while with us. <laughs> All right. I see another question from David. Joshua asks, how big can a barn owl get? And Max says she loves barn owls. That's awesome, I love barn owls as well. So this is about their max size right here. Um, I would say this is about one foot tall, a foot tall about. And uh, this is about their max, uh, maximum size. They're pretty small for um, an owl species. They're a little bit on the smaller size compared to, for example, great horned owls or uh, Eurasian eagle owls. Owls. Those are one of the larger uh, species of owls, and they can get a lot bigger than Sonic. But barn owls are pretty small, uh, usually. All right. Um, our, all right. Lisa's asking, what are their predators? So I had mentioned a little bit earlier. Perfect. So their predators in the wild um, are very much larger birds, even larger owls, eagles, hawks, and falcons. They definitely will prey on uh, barn owls, and they will usually get them. They're pretty good predators, and that is why they don't uh, usually live past uh, two years old. 
Now, another cool thing about Sonic, so you guys are seeing, he's kind of looking around, he's curious in this room right now, looking around everywhere, but you can see if I move my head, he's kind of moving his neck all over the place, right? He has a pretty flexible neck. Now, barn owls actually have a very flexible neck. Now, some people might have already heard that they could turn their heads a full circle, 360 degrees. Now, that is not actually true. They can't turn their heads a full circle around, but they can turn their heads 270 degrees, which is enough to look all the way to the back of Sonic, which is pretty interesting. Oh, he's going to do a nice wing stretch for us today. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> All right. Now, it's important for Sonic to have a flexible neck because if we look at Sonic's gorgeous face, he has these big eyes, these big black eyes. Now, these eyes, he actually can't move his uh, eyeballs in his skull. So, for example, we could do that, right? If I keep my head straight, but I move my eyeballs, you guys could see that we could all move our eyeballs in our heads. Sonic, however, he cannot do that. So if he wants to look around in the room, he has to move his entire head in order to see whatever he is trying to see. Kind of like what he's doing right now is kind of look around, see what's behind the set here. So that is why owls have such a flexible neck because they can't move their eyes in their skull. So they need, they need to be able to move their skull around to be able to see all over the place. <laughs> All right, Kyla, he is asking, what does Sonic eat? That's a great question. So Sonic is a carnivore, so he loves to eat meat. Specifically, barn owls do love to eat rodents, so mice, uh, voles, rats, and all sorts of things like that. But they'll also eat birds and uh, uh, small baby mammals if they come across them as well. Now, um, an interesting fact of how he finds his prey as well Owls, their main sense of hearing, uh, sorry, their main sense that they use is their hearing. So owls actually have the best hearing that has been tested in animals, which is pretty incredible. Now, the reason behind this is actually because Sonic has ears that are placed differently, like not on the same uh side or side of his head or length of his head, if I'm trying to say. So basically, one ear is going to be a little bit up here, and the other one is going to be a little bit lower than that other ear. Now that actually allows Sonic to hear in 3D almost. And what that means is that he is able to pinpoint exactly where a sound is coming from, how far away that sound is coming from, and if it's coming from the ground, up in the trees, or somewhere in between. So he knows exactly where a sound is coming from. And he can, he can even hear uh, little mice that are running underneath uh, the soil or even underneath the snow. If it's wintertime, he could hear that and know exactly where he has to jump to be able to grab his food. All right. Uh, Bailey is asking, does he hoot like other owls? That is an excellent question, Bailey. So. Um, you, we usually always think that owls just automatically hoo. We always hear it in shows or things like that, that we'll always hear hoo. But in, actually, uh, Sonic does not hoo. He is, he is, he screeches. So he is a part of, he is part of the owls that screech. So we have different types of owls, like a Western screech owl, for example, too. They will do a little screeching sound rather than a hoot sound. And that is how they communicate. So not all owls hoot, if you didn't already know that. <laughs> all right, Sadie is, is saying he looks so soft, is he? He is actually incredibly soft, yes. Now, he actually is really soft, and that allows him to have silent, uh, uh, silent flight, and which is another advantage that he has when he is hunting to find his prey. So, um, for example, when we're hearing pigeons flying outside or other types of birds that are flying away from us quickly, maybe if we startle them, you could sometimes hear the flapping that, what, that they're doing when they fly away. Sonic, however, he is very silent. You almost cannot hear him when he is flying. Now, the reason of what, uh, because of this is obviously because he has very soft feathers, but also at the edge of his feathers, they're actually frayed. So kind of like a scarf, the stringy end of a scarf, that it, uh, the way it looks at the end of everyone's scarf, if you have one at home, that's kind of like what the end of his feathers look, look like. And that allows the air to pass through his wings and basically make no sound at all when he's, when he's hunting, when he's flying, sorry. So that way when he is hunting and he hears finally a mice, a mouse, sorry, that's uh, under the snow or under wherever, he's able to sneak up and grab it without that mouse ever knowing it was coming. They are very, very efficient uh, hunters they, they, uh, when, they're, when they're trying to catch their food. <laughs> All right. So Lisa is asking, does he shed his feathers? That's another great question. So yes, he definitely does shed his feathers. 
Uh, they do it about once a year. It's called a molting process, which he is doing um, now. He looks pretty good. Uh, and other um, Some other birds that we have look a little bit uh, more rusty looking almost as they're losing their feathers. So an interesting thing too is that birds, what they will do is they will lose all their feathers and then regrow them. Um, in order to do this, however, it takes a lot of energy. So they'll usually do it when they have enough uh, food around because it takes a lot of energy to get rid of all those feathers and put them, uh, grow them back. They won't do it all at once, of course. They'll do it about one or two feathers, a couple of feathers at a time. And for example, interesting enough, if he's gonna be shedding his wing feather, he'll drop one on this side and he'll drop the exact same one on the other one so that it doesn't throw him off when he, if he still has to fly when he is uh, shedding these feathers. All right, Kyla is asking how well can Sonic see? He actually has really good low light vision. He has very good vision in general, but he has a better low light vision. So you'll typically see these guys um, hunting at dusk and dawn, and that is when they will do, um, that is when they can see the, the best. <laughs> and because, uh, they, because of their low light vision, it's better at, at lower, um, obviously lower intensities of light. But they could still see pretty well in the daylight still. All right, so another cool thing that I could say about Sonic is as you guys are noticing, he has an awesome little circle on his face. So another uh, name for barn owls or another name that we could call barn owls as well has also been called uh, heart, thank you, Lisa. Why does he have that ring around his face? So they're also called heart face owl because it kind of looks like he has a heart on his face. If you see that little indentation. Now this, uh, these feathers actually, they are called a facial disc. These feathers circle a facial disc. Now that basically acts like a funnel and it helps to bring all of the sound into Sonic's ears. So it adds another one on top of his asymmetrical ears. He also has kind of like a funnel shaped face to help him um, help direct all of the sound in his ears so he is able to see even better. Another name that barn owls have been given as well are called ghost owls. Now, the reason because of this is also because farmers used to think that their barns were haunted. So the name barn owl came to be because, of course, barn owls, they love to build their nests in old wooden barns. But sometimes farmers would get kind of scared if something uh, was flying and it wasn't making any sound and it was just a white thing flying in the dark. So they thought it was ghosts, so they would, they would call him a ghost face or ghost owl, sorry. All right, what else can I talk about, Sonic? So we have he has these awesome talons that you can see right here. So his feet are very strong, and that is what he will use to catch his prey. So he's going to use his hearing to be able to hear the prey and find it and find out to pinpoint exactly where it is. And then once he finds that prey, he's going to use his silent flight to sneak up on that prey, and he will use his, his talons to grab that, um, for example, my mouse, that, uh, that rat, and he will kill it in his, in his talons and he will swallow that prey whole. They usually like to swallow their prey whole. They won't really bite and chew kind of like falcons and hawks. They'll take smaller bites. These guys, they like to just swallow their prey in one go. However, owls, they can't really digest uh, skin, fur, and bones of the prey that they are eating. So what owls will do is they will regurgitate a pellet that basically has all of that skin, uh, fur, and bones in that pellet, and they'll just re regurgitate it out because they can't digest it. And interestingly, interestingly enough, if you go into the forest and you do find an owl pellet, you can actually dissect that pellet and you will have in the entire mouse skeleton or rat skeleton, whatever that uh, um, bird has eaten. And scientists have actually done this in order to better uh, find out what owls eat in the wild. All right, so Lisa is asking, can he fly? Of course he can fly and he is an excellent flyer. Um, and he is a very silent flyer as well. <laughs> All right, Kyla is asking, does Sonic, Sonic's, do Sonic's feet ever get cold? So their circulation is pretty good in their, in their feet. If he does get cold, I'll put his feet here. If his feet does do get cold, he could kind of bring them up into his chest where he has some nice thick feathers in here. And that's how he'll keep his one foot warm. He'll rotate from one foot to another to help uh, keep his foot, feet warm if he gets a little cold. <laughs> All right, something else that I could add uh, on barn owls is that, so talking about how they could be found on, almost on every continent, because of this, they don't really migrate. Depending on where they are, they might migrate in the country that they live in, but they won't really migrate from different country, uh, from one country to another, like other birds do. So they don't have um, a, a, a migration season. <laughs> 
Now, if we're going into the breeding season of barn owls, so breeding season will be between, well, it depends again, because different, uh, um, different subspecies of barn owls, where they come from, will have different breeding seasons. Uh, for example, the barn owls that live in tropical regions, they won't really have a set breeding season because it is warm all year round. But for example, if we're gonna use Sonic here as an example, the European barn owl, their breeding season is going to be between Mar uh, March to June. So, and it's gonna be, it's gonna happen when it's, once it starts to get warmer from the winter time. And once food starts to be uh, more abundant, because it takes a lot of energy to be able to breed and raise babies. So they may, need to make sure that there is enough food in the wild to be able to um, sustain these barn owls. Am I boring you, Sonic? Is it becoming a little boring? He's heard this talk maybe a, a lot of times before. Maybe he's a little bored of it. <laughs> All right, so Lisa's asking, how are they doing in the wild? So because they have such a large geographic range, they are actually of least concern in the wild. So their population numbers are doing pretty well. However, of course, there are things that are bothering or affecting their population numbers. For example, of course, climate change has, an, has a, a big deal to, to do with that. Um, they are usually seen on farmlands, like I mentioned, because they like to build their nests in uh, barns. However, these days the rodent population hasn't been so good on certain agricultural fields because of certain certain things that they are doing in these ag agricultural fields. So that is affecting them because they aren't having enough rodents um, to be able to sustain a barn owl family. A uh, barn owl family can actually eat can actually eat upwards of a thousand mice in one nesting season. So that's a lot of rodents uh, to be able to uh, catch up and eat. So they, there has to be a lot of uh, rodents in their areas to be able to thrive. Um, another issue, of course, is the predation, like I said, because they, they get uh, killed very young in their age. Um, that could affect their numbers as well. Uh, but other than that, they are doing pretty well. Um, Kyla's asking, or uh, Kyla's asking, when does Sonic sleep other than during lives? <laughs> That's a good question. So, uh, so usually these guys will actually uh, are more so nocturnal than diurnal. So they will usually uh, be active at the at, during nighttime, at dusk and dawn, especially, and then they'll usually sleep during the daytime. Um, so that is why he's also sleepy right now. <laughs> All right, Maggie is asking, what do you think is the benefits of his beak so down going? Uh, what is? What do you think of his beak so down? I'm sorry, I don't understand that question. What do you think? Is him making, he's making Darth Vader sounds. Yes, it sounds like he's making the dirt. But that's why I was mentioning before his screeching. So that's what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like a hoot at all. It's very different rather than his regular screeches. Um, all right, something else I could um, um, uh, comment on him is if we're talking about the nest, going back to the breeding season, um, these guys are actually monogamous. So once they found, find a mate, they will mate with that bird for life. And um, they will also return to the same nesting site every year as well, which is pretty interesting. So um, usually they like to nest in nest boxes or uh, uh, cavity, like tree cavities, sometimes on tall, build, um, tall structures, like in the barns. They like tall dark structures is where they'll usually be nesting in. And they'll usually make a small nest, not really anything big, just with some grasses and kind of just a little indentation. So not like an actual full nest, like for example, an eagle's nest that makes a big nest every year. They'll just make a little indentation and they will lay their eggs. Now they will actually lay anywhere from two to 18 eggs. And for a bird of prey, that is a lot of eggs. Now, typically they will, they will uh, lay about four to seven eggs, but they still can lay up to 18. Now, as I was mentioning, for birds of prey, it's pretty rare to have that many eggs. But the reasoning behind this has to do with their, the fact that they are predated on so much. So they are going to try and raise more babies so that there is more reproductive success instead of just having two babies. And because they, it, their chances of survival are very low, it's better to have a lot of them so that at least some of them could survive rather than none at all. All right. Uh, Charlotte is asking, does he like fruits and vegetables? So unfortunately, he does not like fruits and vegetables. I love them, but Sonic here, he does not like them. He is a carnivore, so he loves his meat. I don't think he, he would enjoy a vegetable or two. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um... Oh, does he have a tongue and can he stick it out? So he actually does and he can. So that, that'll be his, um, his kind of warning, warning uh, posture, I guess you could say. Um, he'll just stick his tongue out at you and that just goes to show that he doesn't like something that you're doing and just to stop. 
So that is when he will stick out his tongue. But he's so sleepy. I think I know, Kyla, like we should tell him to wake up because he's very tired. Look at him. Honestly, I would love to be sleeping right now too. So I can't even blame him. All right, something else that we could talk about. Uh, let's see, I talked about his eyes, talked about his ears. I talked about his facial disc, his sense of smell. Now, barn owls don't really have a sense of smell at all. They don't really use, they only, they have two nostrils, but that's really only to breathe. They don't really use their sense of smell at all. I talked about his super soft feathers. Okay, so talking about his super soft feathers, they're very soft. So compared to other birds of prey, for example, like hawks, falcons, eagles, they, they have soft feathers, but not as soft. They do something called preening, which is basically they clean their feathers and it makes them waterproof to a certain extent which helps them for example when it starts raining so that their their uh, feathers don't become soaking wet it kind of just rolls off their feathers sonic however in order to have a silent flight he kind of has to give up that waterproof aspect because that kind of makes their feathers more stiff so he has very very soft feathers so he doesn't preen them as much or at all even and that allows him to have the super soft feathers However, because I said that they are not uh, waterproof when this happens, if it rains or if they get wet, they can't really fly and they can't really hunt. So they're kind of giving something up pretty, uh, pretty important in order to have silent flight. Sonic, I really think this is interesting what I'm talking about. I think, but it's okay. If he's gonna, if he's gonna, <laughs> gonna sleep, that's fine. All right, so Lisa's asking, do they stay with the same mate? Yes, I had mentioned that earlier. They mate for life with the same mate. Unless that other mate passes away, they will stay with that same mate, which I think is very romantic. I love that. <laughs> All right, Charlotte is asking, he is the opposite of me and my mom because we are vegan. That is awesome, yeah. <laughs> All right, another thing I could talk about him. Let's see, what else? I talked about the no migration, predators, right? Predators in the wild, how they are of least concern. Now we're talking about barn owl species. There actually exist about 23, 23 different, or 36, <laughs> different, uh, 36 different subspecies of barn owls worldwide. And you could look them up. They're pretty cool looking um, and very interesting as well. They all pretty much look the same, have that same facial disc and same coloration, just different uh, darkness and different. Do the girls look the same? They actually do, yes, uh, male and female do look the same. Males usually tend to have a darker coloration. So Sonic here is very light. Male, uh, females, however, sorry, did I say males? I meant to say females. Females have a darker coloration than males. That is really the only way you could, um, the only difference that there is. However, it's also hard, hard enough to tell if there is a male and a female in front of you, especially with, if we're talking about North American ones, um, because the coloration is already pretty dark. But that is the, the main difference between uh, males and females is that the coloration is a lot darker. Um, all right, I think that about does it. I hope I answered everyone's questions uh, about barn owls. I hope you guys fell in love with Sonic as much as I'm in love with him today. And uh, now I'm gonna pass it off to Earth Ranger Judy and she is gonna talk to you guys about our new Earth Rangers app. Thank you so much, Catherine. What an awesome animal. I've never seen anything like it. But anyways, I'm Earth Ranger Judy, and if you're watching this Facebook Live broadcast, odds are you really like animals. And I don't know if you know, but here at Earth Rangers, it is our ultimate mission to protect the animals and the environment. So guess what? There are hundreds of thousands of kids who are protecting the environment just like you, and now it's your turn. So why not become an Earth Ranger and join our team of animal-saving heroes? And this is exactly how. Introducing the brand new Earth Rangers app. Yep, the Earth Rangers app is where kids go to save animals. It's free to join and you get access to real world missions like building backyard habitats, making forest friendly crafts, and saving marine animals from pollution. And with the new animal adoptions, you'll be supporting conservation projects for a ton of amazing species like the majestic polar bear and the adorable red fox. Now you can actually find a bunch of cool and fun animal stuff on our wild fire blog like top 10 lists, quizzes, and more. So create your own avatar, get points for every activity that you do, uh, level up to unlock special rewards, earn badges, and journey through Canada's coolest habitat on your quest to becoming the ultimate earth ranger. And when you sign up, we'll actually send you a free membership card directly to you through the mail. Absolutely free. All you got to do, guys, is uh, 
go to um, the Apple Store or Google Play and download Earth Rangers for free. When you become an Earth Ranger, you'll be a part of a growing movement of kids across Canada who are taking on a leadership role to protect the animals and the environment. Now, if you guys have been a little bit bored at home these days, I know I have, and you're looking for some super cool eco activities to do, don't worry, we have got you covered. We've actually been sending out daily eco activities the last couple of months. That means every weekday, you'll get access to new quizzes, puzzles, um, craft ideas, and eco challenges for you to complete. Now you can actually find them on our Facebook, but if you maybe feel like having them sent them to your email inbox every morning, not a problem. We can also do that for you. We will leave a link in the comments section of this video for you to sign up. And we actually have a little bit of a contest going on. You could win a free mystery prize pack if you post a photo of you completing one of the eco activities. And just make sure you tag Earth Rangers and you tell us a little bit about what you did in this eco activity. But thank you guys so much for tuning in this uh, Facebook Live. Make sure you put in the code FB July into the Earth Rangers app to get bonus 25 points. Okay, remember that FB July. Thank you guys so much for having us and tune in on Monday to see our next animal ambassador. Bye guys.